So we are starting to make uh, music in our sketches. This is a little bit involved. Um, it's the first time we're going to use something called a library. But it's really just you go to a menu and you click the right option. It's not, it's not anything too difficult. A bunch of new code will appear in our, in our, um, in our uh, editor here. But don't be too intimidated by it because it's all really just typed in by processing. I think the first step where we should start though is getting a, an MP3 file. So if you have your own MP3 file, I think it supports a, a number of other options, WAV or WAV files uh, as well. There's a, there's a few options. Um, you just bring that in. But if you're looking for some music, a great place to go is uh, incompetech.com. It's like this is music made by a guy named Kevin McLeod, and it's all royalty-free music. Uh, I'll link this in the um, in the team's site or maybe in the YouTube video uh, doobly-doo thing. And uh, it's just like tons and tons of free music that you can just download, and it, it's not copyrighted. I mean, it is copyrighted, but it has a attribution license. So you have to say that you used Kevin McLeod's music from Incompetech.com if you put it into your... Triple A video game. Like if Call of Duty was like, okay, we want to put Trouble of Tribals in our game. They could do it for free, I think. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> but uh, you, have to, you have to say, uh, we use this person's music somewhere in the credits or whatever. So that's cool of him, eh? And he's got tons of music. And I don't know what it all sounds like. I guess I'm not plugged into my speakers, but if I play this, it might be loud enough. Let's see what Trouble with Tribals sounds like. Where's the play button? Here it is. All right, so let's say that's the perfect song for me. I mean, you could like work it a little bit harder. Maybe that's not you, but uh, I don't care <laughs> because this is a demonstration. So I'm going to download this and notice that when you download, it does have like two different licenses. So you can choose the free license because you're just a student making a project for the excellent price of zero euros. Uh, that's my kind of uh, price tag. So I choose the free license. I guess maybe Call of Duty can't use it for free. Maybe they have to pay for that more expensive license because they're like a big company. Um, so I agree to the conditions. It basically says that this becomes something I'm going to put out there. I should give credit. And thanks, Kevin McLeod. We're officially here giving you credit at incomptech.com. And uh, you can just download this file. I'm going to download it to my desktop, and then I'm going to drag it to the right place because you've got to put it in a specific place. I'm also going to rename it. Right now, it's called long, 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 long name, and I don't want to type that out because you have to type out the file name when you load it into processing, and that's going to be annoying. So I'm going to type in a song .mp3. I can remember that, right? And if I had another song, I'd probably call it song two and song three, just so that I can remember. If you were making a really rich game with tons of sounds, then you might want to get more descriptive, but chances are you won't have it one or two at most. So song .mp3, and I think I already have it saved there, but I'll save on top of it. So it's downloaded, and just to confirm, it's down here. Yeah, song.mp3. Okay, so the next step is to, to take that file you downloaded and put it into your sketch folder. And it's got to go in a specific place. So I'll show you where that is. So if this is my sketch here, and by the way, you should probably save it before you do this step. So just save it as you know animation or whatever uh, so it doesn't have their default file name. And once you've done that, you can press Control K. K is in kangaroo. I don't know why it's K. You press Control K, it opens up your sketch folder. And I've already done it, but I'll just delete it uh, just so I can do it again. Usually you just see your file, right? Whatever it's called. So what you want to make is a little folder. I'll just click New Folder and call it Data. That's a special folder that processing is looking for. Anytime you're, it's got other resources, other assets, whether they're images or fonts or sounds or videos, it looks in the data folder. So I'm going to make a data folder, and then I'll just drag and drop the song file I downloaded into the data folder. So just give me a second to do that. So it's on my desktop, oh, up here, and I'll just drop it into data. So I have it set up now so that I got my sketch right beside a data folder, and in data is the song.mp3. And by the way, if you don't see the .mp3, that's probably important to see those file extensions. They're called the dot, like three letter things. Uh, so if you can't see it, you can just go up to the view tab, click view, and then go over to this, these checkboxes and choose this one right here. 
file name extensions. Just check that off. If I think it's not set by default on the school computers. If you're using a Mac, I don't know. I think they already show the extensions by default, which is good. Thanks, Mac. <laughs> if they don't, uh, we can Google. We'll figure it out if you can't find it. But it's, it's helpful. Okay, so that's my setup. So I've set up uh, the file in the right folder, and that's ready to go. So now I can start coding it up. And remember, I'll have all this stuff, not only on the video, but there'll be an example of the code. I'm going to link to this uh, website here. This is the Minim Quick Start Guide, and it will show you the examples of basically what I'm going to do here. So I'll link to this. Uh, Minim is the name of the library, which I'm going to use to make this happen. And what is a library? So in programming, a library is a, a another uh, set of functions that aren't originally built into processing. So anybody can make a library and send it out for free. This processing only has so many bells and whistles built into it. But someone was like, oh, I really want to make music and stuff. So they wrote all this code and they made it free for you to download so that it extends processing so it can now play music as well. There's all sorts of libraries that do all sorts of things from uh, taking an input from, um, from like, a, what, what is the word for a console, um, like gamepad? Is it gamepad? What do, you, what do people call the things you play console games with, the thumb pads and the buttons and things? Controller, thank you. <laughs> there's, there's libraries for interacting with the controller. There's libraries for interacting with physics engines. There's libraries for connecting to all sorts of different things. Uh, this is the one we're going to use. And luckily, this one's easy to find. If you, I'll zoom in pretty far. You just go to the sketch menu, and there's an import library section. So these are, you won't see quite as many as I have because I've already extended some of these things. Uh, but you should see Minim here. Minim is the name of the library that I want. And can I just con confirm you guys can see Minim if you click the sketch menu? Do, do you see that or no? You do see it? Beautiful. So you can just click on Minim. If you're curious, you can click Add Library and just see the other things that are out there. AI for 2D games. Um, Arduino. Box 2D for processing. It's a uh, physics engine. There's all sorts of stuff. Console. Uh, you know, all sorts of cool things you can you can get. But I don't want those cool things right now. I just want Minim. So I'm going to go Sketch, Import Library, and it's all the way at the bottom. I'll click Minim. And whoa, what happens? Look, it says all these statements in here. Import, blah, 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 blah. So those are just the statements that are needed to bring the library into processing. And you don't have to memorize these or whatever. You just click that import minimum thing and it'll just it'll type it in for you. Uh, so I won't spend too much time talking about those. Uh, the next step after you've brought the library into your sketch is to make two variables. Uh, and so far, this is what variables look like, right? Int x. That's sort of a typical variable. So it's not going to be an int it's going to be something else. So there's two different types of variables we're going to need. And it's a little bit annoying, but we're going to have one that's a minim variable. And this is just going to make an object that sort of represents minim so we can interact with minim. It's, got, it's like a tool chest of minim tools. Um, so I'm going to call it, um, uh, I don't know. In this quick start guide, it calls it minim. But that looks pretty stupid, right? Minim, minim. So I'll just leave it like that because it, it'll correspond with the with the quick start guide, but I personally would call this like minim tools or something like that. I'd probably call it something more interesting. Uh, but I don't want to confuse anybody, so I'll leave it the way it is in the quick start guide. The second variable is going to be a variable that stores a song file. So it'll convert it from an mp3 into some kind of like local processing um, encoding. So those are called audio player variables. So instead of int, you put in audio player, and then you can give it any name you want. I could call mine song if I wanted to. So this is going to store the song. Is that a question or just no problem? So uh, so that's step two, I guess, of the code is make these two variables. And if you wanted other songs, you can make more audio player variables. You can make audio player song two, audio player song three. You can make a whole bunch of different song uh, variables for all the different sound effects and music you want to put into your project. So the next step is kind of annoying. I, it's uh, just some setup stuff that you have to do. So this is one of them. Here's a line of code I don't want to get too much into today because it looks a little wild. Minim equals new 
minim this. <laughs> and this is just turning on the library is basically what this does. It's kind of annoying because we don't know what this is yet, but basically this represents our sketch. And we're passing our sketch as an argument. Whoa, that's pretty crazy, right? But honestly, uh, I wouldn't worry about understanding this in too much depth right now because we will get into that later in the course, like what the new keyword is and this. Uh, but right now, we just need to know how to turn on minimum. So if you just take that as a, um, you know, just like, okay, that's the thing I type in to turn minimum on, then that's okay for now. And later on, we'll get into the details. And then we'll actually load the file. It looks like this. Minim dot load file. And then we can put the name of the song, which was song.mp3. And we put it in quotes, the double quotes. Which unfortunately is yellow and that doesn't show up too well, <laughs> but that's okay. So this is the step where we actually load the file into our project. And last but not least, we can play the song, song.play. This dot notation is something that's new. These are functions that are attached to objects or attached to data. So it's like instead of putting play is an, uh, our song as an argument, you actually call the function from the from the, uh, from the variable. So that's a kind of weird new thing. I wouldn't worry about it too much. We will get into object-oriented programming in the future. So if you just kind of follow the pattern for your stuff, I think it'll be good to go. Now let's see if I made any mistakes. If I go and run this, do I get some random song that plays? Oh, there it goes. Woohoo! All right. So it looks like it works. And actually, this is a, a future project we might do is make an MP3 player where you can just click load and like pick files to play. And it shows you like the progress of how long we've been playing. And it shows you like a little equalizer thing with the bars going up and down as the beat goes and things. That might be a project we do uh, later in the year. We did it uh, a couple years ago. We did, haven't done it for a while, but uh, that'll be a fun one to do if we do it. So all that stuff is probably like, ah, oh, it's too much information, can't absorb it all. If you have YouTube in front of you right now, then maybe you could just, you know, just type that all out. But um, I'm going to link the quick start guide because it has basically this exact example here. Uh, so all those things that you need here. It includes an input, but I don't think anyone's going to be like reading in microphone or like no one's plugging in their MIDI piano or, to this right now. But Minim does handle that. We had a student that wrote a program one year that involved their saxophone. They were a saxophone player. And they could like it have uh, the input for the saxophone. It was like, uh, it would make an animation as they played the saxophone. It would change depending on um, their music that they play, which is pretty cool. But that's not what we want to do right now, probably. So, um, so I'll link that up, and you should be able to get that information pretty quick. Okay, thanks, everybody.